Hey YouTube, it's Phil Twenty today, and I want to go over some things about solar. I decided to change my lifestyle slightly, not a lot, just slightly, to implement solar into my lifestyle and my family's lifestyle. Currently, everything you see here has been running off of solar. All the lights in the house run off of solar. Everything but the air conditioner, heater, and the stove. So, currently, we're not running air conditioning with it, but I do run air conditioning, so I'm not entirely off solar. So, being that that's said, let's get up on the other side of it. Whenever the power goes out, I really don't feel a difference. Um, you know, because every light switch in the house still works, and every receptacle in the house still works. And most of the time, as long as a telephone pole near my home doesn't get destroyed by, you know, lightning hitting it or a tree hitting it um, it's normally working so my internet works too so when the power goes out and the neighbors don't have internet uh, or not internet but uh, power for their home I, I send them an extension cord and say hey run your fridge no big deal so other than that you know it's 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 really uh, down to earth pretty easy to do so basically I turn on the inverter, make sure it's on 60 hertz. Then, if it's not, then I have to turn it back off. Put power 240 volts into it, which is already. I just plug in a, a cord, and then flip it back on, and then unplug the cord. Uh, I'm having trouble with my inverter. It's an Ames inverter, and I, don't, I can't recommend getting them. Uh, I think they're junk. And uh, a lot of people said you shouldn't have bought an Ames inverter. This and that. Well. I bought this inverter four years ago, and currently it does exactly what I needed to do as long as I put power onto the circuit and then take it back off afterwards. I don't even have to put a load on the circuit. So I could use a very teeny tiny wire to, you know, set the hertz. Um, there may be a way for me to resolder the circuit board with a resistor that is a 10,000 ohm resistor on a certain location that's going to allow me to do it. I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe I'll make a video on it maybe that would be pretty cool but first I'm gonna to want to have a backup inverter so in case if I damage it I'll just uh, I won't be out of an inverter so let's uh, talk about you know my beginning of the day I wake up I go turn on the inverter and then I monitor the uh, capacity if the capacity is uh, kinda low then I don't run stuff uh, you know, like the dishwasher, stove, coffee pot, uh, washing machine, but I still run my refrigerators. I still run my appliances that are uh, computers, uh, lights, everything that I need to run, I make sure that I've got the ability to run it. So I just want to make sure that everything I've got is ready um, to go. Um, because when even when it's cloudy, I make about six, seven hundred watts. Um, sometimes nine hundred watts, depending on the voltage of the batteries. So you know, I get additional power output on that situation, which is it's, it's really nice. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, it's really nice to see our, our electric bill drop. It's uh, you know a benefit. But the most important thing to me is to prevent my computer equipment from dying. Um, whenever we lose power or whatnot and to keep me up to date with you guys so I can always uh, be in contact with you. Um, worst case scenario is if I lose power to everything besides my phone I can still power my phone and send you guys updates or real low resolution videos if need to be like if the power was out for a day or two in the area and the catastrophe could hit I could uh, you know help some people out um, you know, cool some food or even send them some power across the street or whatever it takes. You know, uh, you know, I, got, I give power to the neighbors whenever they need it. It's no big deal. I really uh, am happy to help. Um, so if you look at it in that situation, there's a lot of people that appreciate it. Um, other than that, you know, this is kind of new to me. I mean, I just started doing whole house solar in February. I've never built a system before and you can see my system that I built. 
but I want you to know that you know it's it seems to be um, new field for me. So is there some things that I would have changed during this installation? Absolutely. And then is there things that I'll go back and keep? Absolutely. So you know it's a lifestyle that's going to change. You're not going to be able to go and just consume power continuously. So, like for instance, today's pretty cloudy. I'm not going to be able to run my uh, dishwasher, which has a thousand watt heater element in it. I'm not going to be able to run the stove or the coffee pot. Each one of those consumes more than a thousand watts each. And the microwave, I can probably use it for a short period of time, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to use, you know, eat with sandwiches instead of a hot meal uh, until the batteries get topped off. Once the batteries are fully topped off, I'm okay with uh, using it. But, you know, right now it's cloudy. So, you know, that's the kind of lifestyle that you're going to be looking at. It's not that uh, when sun's gone, you don't get any power, because that's not true. But it's a complete myth. It do, do, that's not true at all. But right here, I can pull up on my phone how much power I'm consuming. I'll just go ahead and show you, because it's important for you to know that you still make electricity when there's clouds, and you make a lot if you get to certain type of solar panels, that's uh, exactly what you need. So let's go over here to um, power, and right now I'm making 1,021 watts, okay, huh? 1,045, it's going up and down, and the energy output is for today is this. It's 4.8 kilowatts. Okay? And I've made a total lifetime that when I didn't accidentally reset it, 1,377 watts. Now, I want you to remember 13 uh, kilowatt hours. So it's not watts, 1,377 kilowatt hours. Okay? And I've reset it like 10 or 15 times at the end of the day, maybe 20 times. Um, and that's going to reset that count to zero for those days. So every midnight, it records all the information that it, it took and starts over on a new day at midnight. So if you, if you take consideration we're cloudy right now, and what time is it? It is uh, 12.55, so this is peak hours and it's really cloudy. I'm making a thousand watts out of a three thousand watt solar array. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really excited to keep, you know, having the power come in. It's important that, uh, you know, you get the most efficient equipment that you can get. It's really important that you go as far as you can with the beginning system. Um, this is my suggestion. You need to go and decide if you want to do solar or not with a small system. You start with a small hobby system. You buy yourself some Harbor Freight solar panels and you get yourself a very inexpensive pure sine wave inverter that doesn't consume a lot of power and some cheap batteries that are inexpensive because you're gonna kill them. You're gonna kill them because that's just what happens. You're like, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna test and see how far I go. This is what's gonna happen. I don't suggest spending a ton of money on your first system. Buy a cheap system that you can start charging. Don't even worry about getting an expensive charge controller. Uh, get you a Harbor Freight, one set of solar panels, and see how much power that output. That's 45 watts is what you'll get from that. I mean, I'm not promoting Harbor Freight. I would not put another Harbor Freight system on the property. I gave Troy a Harbor, uh, nine solar panels, which is three Harbor Freight systems, but I didn't give him a P PWM charge controller. I gave him a matching charge controller that will run about 7 or 8 amps at 12 volts, which is hardly nothing. I mean, it's not a lot. But to him, anything is better than nothing. I mean, it's really important that he has some. So you gotta, you gotta take this in consideration. And in reality, you want to have a good amount of power coming in. You want to have more coming in than 
you're going to use in a day. And you want to be able to charge your batteries at night too. But a hobby kit, it teaches you how to respect the, uh, the uh, battery capacity. So my battery capacity, I kind of scaled it up. You know, I, I went with my system, you know, and I had really cheap batteries, and then I scaled up my system, okay? So I went from a 600 watt inverter to a 6,000 watt inverter, so that's 10 times more the power. I had about 300 watts, now I got 3,000 watts, so that's 10 times more the power. And then, I don't even remember the amp hours of the battery, I had about five of these uh, AutoZone batteries, advanced auto parts, you know, the big box auto parts store batteries. So uh, I went with that route, and then I went with the uh, went six. I had six cheap batteries, and then I put in twelve golf cart batteries that are from Trojan. Um, and Yankee Four gave me the suggestion on those Trojan batteries, and they're monstrous. They're really powerful um, compared to what I had before. I could run my inverter that this six thousand watt inverter for about an hour to two hours before it would die. After I fully had fully charged the batteries, so you know it would completely discharge the batteries to where the inverter would shut off. And that's really, really low. So you gotta take consideration. The golf cart batteries is a good medium range setup. They'll start, you know, your you air conditioner compressors that are window units, they'll start you know, refrigerators you can run. I run two refrigerators here. So, you know, you really want to get to the, down to the nitty gritty. What do you want to run? Are you just want to lower your electric bill? Or you don't care about losing power? Do you lose power a lot? Do you lose power a little? You know, if you lose power very, very rarely, you know, this is something you could do if you don't really want to go with the off-grid setup and I recommend it because you're going to get the most out of your money. It's a cheaper way to install it and it's cheaper to maintain and it does a better job of saving you power but it doesn't change your lifestyle like my lifestyle has changed because I did an off-grid solar array. I have batteries to maintain. I have to make sure that they're fully charged every day. If they're not charged, I need to get them charged up pretty quickly. I do have the ability to charge them from the grid at night if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. I also have the ability to monitor my batteries from inside the house. Now, if you do a, a grid tie system, which is obviously you know a lot more beneficial in the long run for the kilowatt hours. You get a lot more kilowatt hours out of the 3000 watt system than I would have already gotten. If I had a grid top, I would probably have about 2000 kilowatt hours, probably, that I've already manufactured and sold back. The only way they'll do that here is I have to put a meter in and then I have to pay my electric bill and then they'll give me a check back for six cents a kilowatt hour that I sell to them. Now, I pay 12 cents a kilowatt hour to eight cents. It's up and down, it depends on how much power I consume. The less power I consume, the cheaper it actually gets, which is pretty cool, uh, because now, instead of having a $150 to $100 electric bill, I've got a $50 to $80 electric bill. Um, it's going up and down but I was gone and I did not run my system while I was gone so you know I had to pay for an additional week of not having solar running my house so you know if you look at it like that I should probably have about a 60 to 50 dollar electric bill uh, because I left stuff on fr refrigerators a few lights TVs whatever you know and if you look at it like this it's a lifestyle are you willing to go the extra mile, wake up in the morning, flip some switches, turn it on and off, do some maintenance every month to uh, fully top off the batteries, 
If you want to go with the low maintenance system, you would want to go with a GM. Now. They are very good new, uh, they're called advanced glass mat batteries, and they're very good. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying they're expensive, and I'm not willing to pay the additional price and because you can't fully discharge them. There's um, a type of batteries called Iron Edison batteries. I intend on that being my next battery bank. And that will be on the next system that I'm going to build. It's going to be a 48 volt system. I'm still going to have my 24 volt system. I'm just going to uh, build onto it. So I'm going to have the 48 volt system that I'm going to have to run the house because I'm going to get a smaller inverter to run all that stuff. And then I'm going to do the 24 volt system is going to be running my stove or my dryer. I'm not exactly determined which one yet. Now I might be able to run uh, a smaller air conditioner. I don't know if you've seen my previous video what I was discussing with that. So I'm going to get more solar power in the house. So it's going to, with basically the same solar array that's on the roof and then I'm going to you know charge the batteries with the other inverter through alternating current which is kind of wasteful but I can you know it's you know, making power, so no big deal. Uh, it's going to benefit me in the long run because I can use more things and benefit with more electrical consumption devices. Because once I hit absorb, I mean, I'm backing off a thousand watts for four or five hours a day, you know. And then once I hit float, I'm only using the manufacturer what I'm making. So. I'm going to get two, uh, you know, have the same battery bank I got that's going to be the lead acid, and then I'm going to add another uh, Iron Edison battery bank to a different inverter, and that's going to be really, really cool. Um, so it's going to be an expansion, and I want everybody to understand that this is a lifestyle, it's extremely addictive, and it's an expensive hobby, but in the long run, if you build your system well, to where it's not under a stressful load all the time on your stuff then you're going to have a system that's going to last you a long time so if you split up the heavy loads between us you know different inverters and also you know two is one one is none in my perspective if you got one that quits then that's going to be a problem but i just wanted to go over you know letting you know what is a lifestyle like of solar i get up in the morning I go turn it on at night. I turn it off, and it's really uh, enjoyable. So, just stick around with me. There's more coming, and I'm going to uh, go over some more stuff. And I really appreciate all the subscribers. I want to say thank you. I want you to like, subscribe, share, and comment on my channel. And I'm going to do everything I can to comment with you back and do uh, you know more videos. If you got videos that you're, if you got ideas for videos or even questions that you're unsure of and you want me to explain it, please let me help you. Uh, I'm willing to help you in any way possible. This is Phil20. That's my PSN gamer tag. And we're on solar, electricity, and electronics. And I will holler at y'all later.